Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Jason here, and I'm going to say something that's going to make you angry. Starfield has the possibility of being better than No Man's Sky. <laughs> no, no, it's no, it's not. Oh, oh my! The the gameplay. The, before we get too deep into it, I just want to right off the top tell you possibility. We have no idea if it's going to be or not. I just, from what we've seen, it looks like it might be the next level, the next step beyond No Man's Sky, and I love it. And ship customization. Sean Murray, if you're listening to me, if you hear my voice, Sean Murray, ship customization. Holy cow, that number one with a bullet right there. Bullet point number one ship customization anyway before we get too deep into it what is starfield starfield is a game being developed by bethesda they are the developers of skyrim oblivion elder scrolls all the elder scrolls games fallout 3 fallout 4 fallout 76 but don't let the, uh, don't 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 look at that fallout 76 but don't look at that but they, they are traditionally single player focused RPG games that are in first person. So they are making Starfield, which is their first new series in 25 years. So they've been doing sequel after sequel after sequel. This is their brand new game. This is their new IP and it looks amazing. They showed first gameplay yesterday at the Xbox Bethesda showcase, and it blew my mind. So let's get into some of the similarities and why I think it has the potential to be better than No Man's Sky. So Starfield number one, you are scanning things. The first shot we got from the gameplay was scanning a plant, literally scanning a plant, which is awesome. You can scan animals, you can scan all kinds of stuff on the planets. And as you can see from this screenshot, it's a survey. We're at 66.6%. .6%. You need to change that. Holy crap. But it has resources, fauna, and flora, just like No Man's Sky, where we're scanning different things on a planet to get money. I don't know if this is going to go towards a research percentage, or maybe you can unlock different items by scanning. We don't know what this does, but we do know it is keeping track of how many resources you're scanning, the fauna, the flora, all that kind of stuff. I mean, right now we have fauna zero. There's no animals here, but there's flora. There's two plants that we have. And so there is scanning in the game and there is mining for resources. Later on in the gameplay, you'll see we pull out a multi-tool type item, a some kind of a, a beam, a mining beam, and we are mining iron. So there are, there is going to be mining resources in this game, again, just like No Man's Sky. So there are very, very similar features in this game, but on top of that, you're also going to get the aspect of if you ever, if you've ever seen a Fallout game, you're going through bases, you're clearing them out, you're picking up items, like you're going through lockers, you're going through all this stuff, you're fighting enemies. In this game, you have weapons, you can shoot people. All that kind of stuff. There's a jetpack that you see later on in the showcase. You actually could use your jetpack to fly over and attack, which is very, very awesome. And I want to say, by the way, it is primarily focused on first person, but with all Bethesda games, well, with a lot of them, you have the ability to go into third person. That camera has traditionally not been very good. That's why most people play it in first person. Hopefully they've actually gone through it and revamped that camera. So it's a viable option. So hopefully they fix that. But the other thing that they have is they have base building, which is amazing. So again, this is, this is a, something that popped up in Fallout 4 and they are bringing it back. They are giving you the ability to make a base and not only make a base, but you can hire random NPCs to do jobs at your base in Starfield. I don't know how it's going to work in Starfield. We don't know. They haven't said how that's going to work, but we do have the ability to recruit different NPCs to work at your base. But the other, the, the, the number one bullet point that I keep pounding on, they have 
ship customization in Starfield. You're able to not only remove ship, you know, parts and add parts, engines, things like that. You can customize the color, the look of it. So you, it's not just functionality, like adding different areas or different like research bays or whatever. You're changing the colors. You're changing the shape. You can add different. Oh, it is a really cool looking ship customization that I hope that No Man's Sky takes or uses or even just adds. Sean Murray, please. I've been adding, I've been asking for ship customization for I think two years now. Two years we've been asking for ship customization and we haven't gotten it yet. So hopefully they add that. The other thing that Starfield has that's very similar to No Man's Sky is ship combat. You're able to actually go into your ship after you've customized it however you want, and you can fly around the system, the actual outer space, not just on the surface. You can go into outer space and have space combat. You can attack different uh, NPCs, different enemies. You could, oh, just like No Man's Sky. So very, very similar to No Man's Sky. And then the last piece that's very, very similar to No Man's Sky is the fact that not only can you travel to different cities that are on planets, they have different towns and cities and settlements that are on planets. You can go to any part of a planet. You can go out there. Any part is searchable. And not only that, it's not just a handful of uh, planets. Like if you were thinking of outer worlds where you have like a general area you can go to, you can go to the whole planet, search every inch, and it's thousands of planets. Look at it. Oh my God, Todd, this is just too good. Let's take a look at one of our planets, Jemison. You can land in New Atlantis, but you can also land and explore anywhere on the planet. And it's not just this planet, it's all the planets in the system from barren but resource-heavy ice balls to Goldilocks planets with life. And not just this system, but over a hundred systems. Over 1,000 planets, all open for you to explore. Now, I want to put a bullet point in this because a lot of people were pointing out that, wow, it has to be procedurally generated. There's not going to be hand-built everything. Of course, there's going to be just wide open spaces that are just filled with nothing. It's going to be trees and animals, and that's it, rocks. Okay, that's going to be part of it. But there's also going to be hand-planted spaces, hand-planted areas. You know, not every square inch is going to have people crawling all over it and a town and animals and a mission there. No, of course not. There's thousands of planets. If it's going to be over a thousand planets, there's no way you could do that. But I have a feeling that it, they're all going to be unique rather than no Man's Sky where, yeah, you can, I mean, yes, quote unquote, they are unique. Every planet is different because they're procedurally generated. But we all know, don't you, don't lie to yourself. We all know that once you've been to about 50 different planets, they all start kind of looking the same. If you've been to one radiation planet, you've been to most all of them. Now, there are procedurally generated, like you'll run into different animals with different colors, or sometimes they have horns and sometimes they don't. So if you're counting that, then sure, there's endless possibilities. But in general, you're basically running into the same 50, 60 different types of things. Whereas with the Starfield game, it feels like they said, look, we have a thousand different planets because it's pared down. There's not 18 trillion quintillion planets. There's only a thousand that gives them the opportunity to kind of go through and say, okay, not every square inch, but I can drop a base here or I can drop a mission over here and you'll get a good amount of, if you search, you might find something. So that is where the similarities kind of end because on top of that, Starfield is an RPG, which means you have a character creator in this game. You can actually create your own character, customize the look, your hair, your attributes, your actual like stats. So if you wanna be introverted, you actually have different abilities rather than someone who's not introverted. So it's very, very cool. And the, the way that you increase your skills, once you've leveled up, you can unlock different skills, like your weapon handling, like for handguns. And then 
in order to improve your handguns, you have to use it. The more you use it, the better you get at it. That's very, very reminiscent of the Oblivion and Skyrim to a certain extent. So you have to unlock it first, and then once you've unlocked it, you get better and better the more you use it. So healing yourself, medicine, pistol certification, things like that. On top of lock picking like normal, you also gain experience from ship battles, finding different locations, like finding different um, like bases and things like that. You know, scanning animals, I'm assuming scanning animals, we don't know for sure. This is gonna be the next evolution of No Man's Sky, in my opinion. It has the possibility of being No Man's Sky, but better. So yes, there's not infinite worlds that you can go and explore. It's more of a linear focus, like, hey, there's a storyline, go from point A to point B. You're not going around, you can go around, there's a thousand planets. You can go around and build bases there, but again, there's not multiplayer, so you're not fighting other people to make a base here. And if you try to make a base, you can't make one. You can make it wherever you want. You can make it your own story, which I love. But yeah, so I think this is going to be the next step. And I mean, who, who knows? It is Bethesda, so it could be buggy as hell. I'm Their track record as of late has not been great. We, we I mentioned Fallout 76 earlier. I don't... <sighs> I want to believe that Fallout 76 was just something they did and they were like, look, we thought it was a good idea. This is a terrible idea, half-hearted thing. We don't want to do this. This is terrible, but we, we spent the time and money on this thing. We have to make our money back. I'm hoping they learned from their mistakes and they just said, look, we know that we'd messed up. We're trying to do something better with this. So I'm hoping that this is going to be the turnaround. and. It looks like it. I'm hyped. I know I'm riding the hype train. Hopefully you are too. Give it some time. It's not coming out until the spring of 2023. We're assuming spring. We know it's coming out before June 30th of 2023. We know that uh, Xbox and Bethesda gave out their roadmap of when they think it'll when it will come out, but there's no hard date. There's no specific date that it's coming out on. So all we have to do is wait and see what happens but i am super pumped up i'm super excited oh this game is so so freaking awesome looking i can't wait to jump in hopefully you can't either and i will see you guys next time